in making beer, the varieties of beer you can make are, um, you know, quite broad. Um, you know, it's like with bread, you can make white bread or any of the combinations of the different grains. Uh, you can do all that exact same thing with beers by using different grains. And then you also have um, a lot of flavor differences you can do by the different ways you hop it, the different yeasts you pick to do it, and even the temperatures you use in the brew house. Beer is mainly uses barley, malted barley, uh, but you can use a lot of other grains, uh, and as well as other ingredients to add if you really want to. But you know, rye, triticale, wheat, all kinds of things have been added over time. Uh, here we're using virtually all malted barley with some wheat and in, in one a little bit of oats. Um, we mill the grains, they come malted. Uh, I should start with that step. Uh, malt is just if you start a seed growing and then you dry it out. It forms an enzyme system that in the plant would slowly convert starch in the seed into a sugar that the seed starts growing on. Well, when we're making beer, we, we use that. Um, the uh, enzymes are all in this dried out seed, which won't grow anymore, but we mill it, we put it into a mash tun, and we'll run it through a temperature uh, profile. You get it to the right temperatures that the enzymes work, and they'll, in about 15 minutes, convert all the starch in that seed into sugars. So we'll end up with a uh, mash, and it's just like a giant bowl of self-sweetening hot cereal. It'll be about 22-23% sugars. And so we'll take that and then you drain the liquid off of the grain husk. You leave the husk behind. That's usually used for like animal feed. And this is a louder ton here. Uh, so it acts like, a, like in a coffee filter or you've got the uh, grounds up in an element and you just drain it through and then you add more water and you just keep until you get all the sugars out. You leave the grain behind, or the, the husk behind, and you get it over into the kettle, which is this tank. And the kettle is where we'll boil it, which then makes it a sterile process, so that then you only get your yeast pitch in. Uh, this is also where we'll add the um, hops. And so from the kettle, we will run through a heat exchanger, cool it very quickly, and then we'll put it into any of the fermenters here. Uh, we do both ales and lager beers here. Uh, ales uh, ferment a little quicker. Uh, the main difference is that it's at a warmer temperature, so you get a little bit different uh, ester formation. They're fruitier, uh, but it's a quicker process. Uh, they ferment out in, say, five days or so. And then you give them some aging time, let the yeast finish it off, and then, because the last little bit of sugar is a little slower, but you want to make sure it gets that also. Uh, and then you let the, the beer mature for a good week or so under cold conditions. And then we, uh, most of our, most all our beers we then filter, move it over to a uh, packaging tank, and then we'll keg or bottle it from there. We get hops from uh, um, really all over the place. Um, we use a lot of uh, American hops, and they're primarily grown in the Yakima uh, region over in uh, Oregon, on up into Washington. Uh, there used to be commercially uh, anywheres up in the north, on through New York, but now virtually all commercial production in the U.S. is uh, Oregon and Washington. Uh, we use uh, some English hops um, and also a, a fair amount of German hops. Um, our, our president has all kinds of plans. Uh, he wants to do a host of different beers, uh, lots of different seasonals, and uh, one-offs. And uh, I, the plan is we're, we're going to have the big brew house to do the bulk of our production, but we're not going to just get rid of this one. So we'll have we're going to try and install this one in parallel to where we can continue to do uh, different recipes, and so. Yes, there's, there's a lot of beers I'd like to do, and uh, there's, we will be doing them over this next couple of years.